Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to get the new exotic for the season, which seems to have been thrown off due to a couple things, but it is here this week, and it is Dead Man's Tail. Now, it is an exotic scout rifle, so fair warning, this is it, looks pretty cool. Still kind of deciding how much I like the weapon for general use, but it's still a pretty cool quest, so you definitely want to do it. First thing that you're going to want to do is open your director, and you're going to want to go to doesn't really matter which way you get there. You can either do the Nightfall this week, which is really easy. Um, doesn't matter, Adept difficulty is fine. And if you catch this video at a later week, because I'm recording this on February 16th, so the second reset of Season of the Chosen, even if you get to this later on and that strike is not the Nightfall, just come up here, go to the Arms Dealer Strike, and you're gonna start it out. Now, once you go inside, what you're gonna wanna do is start out the mission. Uh, you'll go through the basic area. There's gonna be a boss. Um, in a different direction. So normally you start at the strike, clear the ads, and you go to the left, you do the little scanny thing through the door. Now, if you hug the right wall, go through that, and then down through that area, you're gonna find uh, some turrets that you've gotta clear out, you're gonna find a boss out there. And then to the far outside area, it was from like an old Destiny 2 uh, Red War like campaign mission, you're gonna find a signal that you pick up. Now once you pick that up, you're gonna go to Zavala. He is gonna give you a little bit of explanation about the quests. And then once you're done with that, you're going to open your director, go to the Tangled Shore, and right up here, you're going to see the Exotic Quest Presage, or Presage, and I've got to figure out how to say that before I keep butchering it. But what the big deal in here is this is not timed. Uh, as you can see, it's recommended 1230. It really doesn't seem to matter the level. I went in there like 1290 something, and stuff still hurt, so you're going to have to be patient. Uh, there are some Screeb in here. The final boss has got a is a really chunky guy for health. That being said, patience is key. Um, this is the guide for you guys to solo it. So I'm gonna show you where the pieces are, where your enemies are gonna be, and just kind of there's a lot of switches and a little bit of puzzling that you've gotta do. It's not really in depth, but there's a little bit of guidance in here. So here is the Exotic Quest Solo Guide Presage. I don't know if this will be a flawless run because I'm doing this intro before it's done. If I do get a flawless run, guess what? I'll I'll say that at the end. But for now, let's jump in. I'll show you how this whole quest works. It's kind of awesome. Now, I will say as you go through this mission, there are things that look like they're going to be collectibles and things that you'll pick up later on. It does not seem like we can do that right now. So right now, I'm just going to show you guys how to complete the mission. Let's go over a loadout piece first. So as you can see here, I'm going to switch over a couple of my pieces of gear just so I'm a little more outfitted to be optimal. Uh, main thing you want, whatever your heavy you choose to be, it's totally up to you. I'm just using rockets because I've got a decent one. Rocket launcher reserves, rocket launcher scavenger, and rocket launcher ammo finder. The other thing I might advise is if you can get protective light in some way to charge yourself with light, you're not going to be in a bad place. Now the main shields that you're going to be facing in here are going to mostly be solar, Couple Void and Arc in a few places, but Solar's one you definitely want to have manage of. Arc, or Void would be the other one. There's only a couple Arc there in the boss room. Theoretically, you don't really have to kill them if you have something big enough like this. Match game's not active. Now, there's going to be a harder difficulty of, of this later on, but right now, this should get you going. Now, this is a Trials Rocket. Not required. You could use Bad Omens just as easily. And this honestly could be better because it's tracking and cluster, so... Either of these is going to be fine. If you want, I'll just use this one so it's not a Trials weapon. This is the new sniper rifle from this season. I'm using a solar sniper because there's a decent amount of solar guys in here. It's nice to peg them from range. And anything where you can basically work on the boss from distance because you might run out of heavy. And also a pretty decent amount of these, I forget the guys' names. They're kind of bigger, scorn, uh, kind of captain type guys. Those are going to be a little annoying. Definitely plenty of solar, so you're going to want something there. Whatever primary you prefer... Basically, it's up to you, so your choice. I've got Hawkmoon, I've used Dead Man's Tail, you could use Hailing Confusion. I would probably find something that's got a little bit of range, so I might probably stick with this one for the time being. But again, pretty much anything in there. I got a Messenger. I got some crappy Messengers, but I got a Messenger. Uh, I did kind of get my God roll, though, so I can't argue too much. Shout out to Cami and Mr. Ares. Thank you, guys. Anyways, whatever you want up in here, again... If you're missing a damage type, you could totally go Striker and have Art covered. If you want a bubble for Sentinel, if you want to go Stasis, they're all going to work. Most of this is puzzles, not as much on combat. 
So what you'll notice is you come up Several in here. Several months ago, a cabal vessel bearing the name Glycon disappeared near the reef. This ship matches its description and heading. So far, our hails have gone unanswered, and the distress signal continues to loop. You're clear for live fire engagements. Board it, and find our missing guardian. Alright, so basically there was a distress signal, there's a missing guardian, and this thing has a cool story, so I kind of want to let the uh, voice lines happen. Now, you can explore this for a little while, but I'll show you guys where to go. So come out here. You're going to jump across here for a bit of a jumping puzzle. Nothing's too crazy. And whatever ship you have will be parked out there, which is kind of awesome. We're going to float up around this corner. And a little bit of a jumping puzzle, but again, time is not working against you here. So be patient. No rush. But it's also not a big deal if you die. If you're going for a solo flawless, well, then you probably care if you die. So take them slow. I'm not saying this is going to be a solo flawless by any stretch. I've had a couple flubs at points. So we'll see how I do. We're going right in there. There we go. Now. There's a distortion in the feed. No frequencies. Like ripples meeting in conversation. Executing trace. Stand by. So you can slowly work your way in. There are some collectibles, and I'll show you guys what one of these looks like. So it's going to look like this. Now, I've never seen Activate, so I'm not going to do that at the time being. But this is one of these little things you'll be looking for. I'll come back and do those later. I'll show you guys where those are at. I'll try and point them out as I go, though. Now, I'm going to let every little sound and everything play out because depending on when you guys get to this mission, the sound design is awesome and I want to let the sound design shine because it is absolutely fantastic. Now, in here, again, you'll find some things that you can scan. You'll hear some little beeps. There's not much I can do with this thing. And we're going to drop down. They did awesome with the sound design, I'm going to be completely honest, they absolutely crushed it. Now that sounds like an actual turret, but I can't see it, but these are actually the little beeps. Yeah, they definitely made this basically like an alien movie. They did a fantastic job. So from here, there's not too much over here, I'm just showing you guys where everything is at. Next door is going to be here. And we'll continue crouching. And then you're going to work back up above to the next level. Now again, there's going to be things that I can activate later on. I guess I'm going to have to see what those are all about. But right now, I'm just showing you guys how to get through. There's an open patch into the ship's computer. Perhaps courtesy of our lost friend. Again, this is another one. Now, this one doesn't say activate. So... The activation was probably something else back there. I'll have to check it later. Doesn't really matter which way you go. You'll have to shoot a few of those. We'll drop down for our first set. Again, the lighting's awesome. They really did this like alien isolation, kind of like a horror movie. They did such a good job in here. So these are one of the switches. There's a few mechanics in here. This is one of them, just basic switches. Most of the time you're going to activate them. They're not going to be able to be unactivated, so you don't have to worry about hitting them in a timer. They just stay open, and now we're back where we open the door front to the ship. So now, once you get in here, we can go through the big door. Now, this is the second mechanic. You've got this little pool of stuff. So what you're going to do is shoot this a couple times. You're going to get this Egregor Link. And it's going to allow you to pass through the door. No light here. Now, this is something else when it says investigate. You're able to investigate a few different clues. This looks to be kind of a cabal looking... Something bad happened. I'll investigate this stuff later and kind of collect the lore. But for now, I'm just showing you guys how we get through. I'm pointing those out if you want to do them. I just want to record those properly for me. Now, that door obviously is a little glitchy and busted. So we're going to go north. Or up, I should say. So if you're facing that door, just jump up here. We're going to go through this side hallway. 
Glycon navigation system marks their destination as an anomaly left in the wake of Mars's disappearance. I do this every time, but yeah, once you get in this little room here with all these little pipes, typically you'll come around this corner. You actually want to look up. I always miss this one. Jump on up. Keep working your way vertical. All right, in here and down the, down the tunnel. They just did a great job of making this feel like a horror movie. Just shout out to them. All right, so now your big pieces, we are trying to get all the way down there. Gotta do a few things first. So once you come around the corner, be ready. You're gonna find your first set of Screeb that do spawn. Any grenade you've got, like a pulse or a wave grenade is all gonna be good because these guys do have a little bit of health to them. So I like the wave grenade hits for a while, pulse grenade would be good, firewall grenade, anything like that's gonna be a beneficial thing to use. You're going to have some windows that you can't do anything to, so keep that in mind. And there's probably going to be secrets we're going to find later on. So, come around this corner. And we're going to find our switch. Guardian, you're not the only life sign aboard. I see at least one other. Maybe a missing friend. It may not. Yeah, our missing friend is not ha having a great day. I'm going to warn you guys when we get there. He's he's having a rough one. Now, that switch opened this. Now, what this will do is allow us to pass through an area up ahead. But we've actually got to go open it first. And you'll notice it's right here. So it's not open, but I want to show you guys where it's at. And again, here's the next thing that you can investigate. You'll notice it's this little kind of scorn crown looking thing. All right, so again, same thing. Activate your buff. Take it with you. I just can't hover, but however you get around this thing. And again, either side of the doorway is going to be exactly the same exit point, so you're good here. I usually just let it kind of fall off. You might have some more ads coming up. Indeed, you do. If you stay vertical, it won't be quite as bad. And then when you go up to the other side, there will be some actually above you over there. So keep in mind there's going to be some more. They're actually vertical. So if you can kind of land up here, give yourself a little space to work from, and they can't really get to you. I notice they kind of tend to want to hide. Now if you crawl up here, you're probably going to get in their line of sight. And again, I'd just like to be ready, ready with the grenade. There we go. All right, so again, I like to check everything. Sorry if the lighting is a little weird in here. So we came up from here. We're on this level. We can go outside. But you want to check this side first. There's another one of these guys, which we'll activate later on. And we're going to head around to this switch, but we're going the long way around to it. Not much you can do about it, but we've got to get there. So we'll be back over here in a little bit. But for now, we're going to cross over. Third little mechanic, you'll see it a couple times, these little fuses. There's one place where it's going to be really important, but I'll let you guys experience that one for fun. Here's another point where you're going to find some scream. And again, good time for a grenade. If you can line them up, you may not always be able to line them up. But again, the grenades are a nice thing to have. Those little elemental wells for charge with light are good. And again, you can do a little exploring, but not too much is needed. We're going to come around here. Looks like I've got a straggler. There we go. And first place we're going is upper deck. I found a journal of which will eventually open. Omsat. Translation as follows. Today, Callus graced the Glycon with his presence and gazed upon Gotta the get anomaly. this switch first, though. His counselors prepare the exhibition chamber with gold from the Castellum. They are confident the crown is ready. The end will lay eyes upon him and weep at his magnificence. Alright, so... That's where we want to go. 
We go all the way across here. Gonna hit this switch. And you'll notice that door doesn't open yet. And you're like, well, crap. So, head on back. Just to check, still not open. Now what you're gonna do is come back down this hallway. Duck underneath. And now you can shoot the little fuse. I told you they come up every so often. And there's probably, honestly, multiple ways when you come through here on a harder difficulty. I bet that's going to be a thing later on. But for now, that's all we got to do, and our door is open. Now, you would think, how do I activate this platform? Honestly, it's just get near it. Now, some of you guys may know a certain movie reference that is coming up. All I can say is speed is important here. If you're going for a flawless run, you got to get this your first time. And the big thing about this is... You do have a time constraint on this one little section. So when it comes to this section coming up, the big thing you want to keep in mind is you're trying to look at the floor and you're looking for the little blue fuses. They move. They tend not to be on the outer edges. I have seen that. But they're also not going to be dead center either. So I'll show you guys what I mean. But here you go. And if you're wondering, yes, the walls will squish you, and yes, this is from Star Wars. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to pull that switch, Screeb are going to spawn. It's not really a great way to do it. I'm going to use my wave grenade to try and clear most of them out. Your main key is you are trying to look at the floor, and you're trying to look down through the grates to see if you can see the little blue fuses. You need to shoot three of them. So if you're trying to go flawless, you got to do this on your first time, and they are not in the same place every time. So wish me luck, otherwise you get to see what it's like when I die. So again, look early, look fast, be quick. I think I saw one over here. I got one there, one here, and then one here. All right, that's all three, but they are in a different spot every time. If you hit all three, it will stop at this third run right here as long as I hit all three, which I'm pretty sure I did. But you'll notice there's a lot of these that don't have anything in them, but if you catch all three, it'll stop about now. Cool. And your door will open right here, and we go down. So, shout out to the Star Wars Trash Compactor. Again, here's another one of these things that you're going to be scanning probably later on. Well, I made it through that on my first try. I actually may try and do a flawless run, so if I'm extra cautious, that's why. And this is probably your first encounter. Yes, it is. That's the guy we're going to be fighting later on, the Doka Locus of commun Communion. I would use this area back here. And again, now's a good time to not be uh, worried about using heavy supers and all that. So this is a good time to keep your super. They're chieftains. I forgot the name. They are The chieftains are these annoying guys. Now there's going to be a few snipers, so be careful. There's also more that will spawn. So watch the back room. Depending on how many I got with my super, I'm in a decent place, but there's definitely plenty more. Remember, shoot their lanterns for their crit spot. Now I got a couple snipers in the back. And that should be the room. So, it's a good time to use a super and kind of a roaming super for clearing ads, whatever you feel comfortable with. You're typically going to have time between each one of these major fights. Uh, there's a few. So you got the final boss, you got this one, and one other longer one. There's usually time to get your super back between each one. Not really too terrible. Grab any ammo, make sure you're reloaded. Tracking rockets for the final boss, I do recommend. Anything between now and then, it's really up to you. But tracking rockets for the final boss, Guardian. just for a solo Guardian. run, I'll show you why. I think that's them. important. But again, you can probably do it however you like. I swear if you're really good with Whisper of the Worm, you'd probably be very effective, but we'll have to see how this goes. The connection is strong, but the darkness does not speak through them. An ocean without wind. 
Even the light bearer could not coax it to awaken. Yeah, so the story is fairly cool. Now this room is actually the one that you would work through in the arms dealer, so it's like they copied the room. So this is the one where we found all the turrets you had to shoot through, so you like killed the ads out there in the start of the strike, come through that door. This is the same room, it's just darker now. And then there's all these turrets placed all over the place. You'll know, because one of the turrets right when you do it is going to be tucked back here. So, kind of obvious. And then you would go outside to fight the boss, but they just attach this to another place. So this is the second fight. Couple phases. The last phase has big boys. So I look for the chieftains first. Trying to find those if they don't juke me out. Again, focus on the chieftains if you can. And again, if I've got to reload. Alright, so that should mess with him. He dropped heavy anyway, things will be fine. There we go, a couple shots there. Just watch anything with range, because they all want to pick you off. And then the screams start coming. So be careful. They're lighter. This They're a little easier to kill this time because they're not orange bars, but there's plenty of them. And then here's your main two you got to kill. You've got the two big... Um, what are they called? Abominations. Also more of these guys, so try and shoot their lanterns for the easy group kills. Or... One big grenade to uh, win them all. Got some ammo there. Watch the streams. Go vertical if you have to. Alright, so the abominations are going to kind of work like snipers, remember? So anytime I can get a shot on them, I will. This is why a tracking rocket works wonders. Just quick lock, go for the kill. A lot of screed that come in waves, so be careful. Just be careful as they try and jump up to you as well. They will. But as I said, ammo finder is working in my benefit right now. Any tracking rocket will do. And remember, I'm using bad omens. Not even that other one I had. Now, if you feel like you want more cover, I tend to find more cover up here. There are just sometimes guys will come from multiple angles, so be careful. It's actually not going too bad. Okay, they're throwing heavy ammo at me. That may not be normal, but you guys get the idea. Just watch the guys that are spawning coming to you. Again, if you kill them both fairly close together, it actually may work well. This one actually has tracking the cluster, so I get bonus damage. Now, when you kill one, you're going to want to kill the other one fairly quick, because you're about to get a lot of guys to spawn. Oh, he's so close to dead. Now, the point where you feel like you get into a tough spot, well, your name's going to save you there. That's a lot of dead things. A couple snipers on the roof deck up here. As I said, the Screeb will kind of teleport from lots of places, so be careful about those. Got a little more armor here. Just want to finish the big guy off. I don't know if I actually got him. Screeb coming. Come on, where's he at? That's a chieftain. That little tractor thing will ruin you later on, trust me. I just want to kill the big, big abomination guy. Just can't get a good lock on him anywhere. I 
And again, I think the Abomination is dead, so at this point I can play a little more aggressive. If I want to go super, I could to finish those guys off. Probably what I'll do, because I know I've got time till I get to the boss, because we've got some switches and stuff to throw before we get there. See if there's anything else straggling. And that should be a wrap. All right. So grab any ammo in the room. Should be good around here. Why didn't they try to run? All right. So from here, you can't do anything, but we're doing a couple jumps outside. You're going to get a random voice dialogue. FYI, I've seen one on Twitter from Cade, which is weird. I've seen one from Sagira, which we know is dead. Uh, I've saw, seen one from not Crow, um, but Aldrin Sov. So keep in mind, whoever you get this voice dialogue from apparently is not alive. <clears throat> well, there was the Cade one. First time I've seen that. And you basically just want to go vertical here. We'll do searching collectibles and stuff like that later on. You also hear the whispers in darkness. It's a very dark, ominous mission. I want to know what the lore implications are, and I just don't know them all yet. But yeah, if this is an alien isolation inside of a horror game inside of Destiny, I don't know what it is. They did an awesome job. And I know I'll say that a couple times, but I really respect like when they crush like the theme of a mission. All right, you're going to see this room a couple of times. We're going to come at it from a couple different angles. In case you're wondering, that is definitely like a uh, scorned chieftain, but he's not doing so hot. So, when you enter the room, first thing you've got is a switch right over here. And we're going to go into a big circle. So this is going to kind of be your friend. First time here, hit the Egregore link. Take it with you. You're going to run right over here through this door. You're going to need the link to pass through. So if you open that, don't try and walk through. And then take a second and let the link go away. You're going to see some Screeb jump down. And they will be coming. Remember, if you need to get away from Screeb, the high ground can help you. But if you are on the high ground, they won't come to you. So keep that in mind. Granted, if you're there waiting for you, they will. And if you can line them up, works wonders. That should probably be all of them. All right, so you got a nice little cute trick here. What we're going to do, hit this switch. Sniper helps, or a scout. Hit that. That'll stop the electrical field up top. And we're going to jump right up here. Grab this switch. This is not timed anymore. The electricity's back up, but it's not a big deal. We're going to go around the back side, open the door so we kind of get the top entrance open. And now you'll notice we've got a new door to work with right down here. We're going to grab this buff. Take it with to the top side. And we just got to cross through this weird funky threshold to the next one. And we're here. And your next fight is here. This is not as big of a fight, but it's a one you'll want to pay attention to. Oh, you're not going to ruin my flawless run. No, you do not. They tried, but no. Cards with lights probably saved my butt, actually. That is a nice way to get a little defense, just trust me. Those are the times you're going to want some void damage. There's a few. And the other void guy should be usually on the right over here. Gotta love tracking when it curves like a... Like it's got a mind of its own. But that should be the guys up here. We're going to hit a switch and do a little... Uh, switch o change -o. Now, this switch... We're going to open a door down below. Do not go in here. I mean, you can walk down here. Do not stand on this. Basically, it's going to, like, force you down, and it's going to force you down so fast it's going to kill you. I kept trying to figure that out the first time. That is a little... Yo, those guys hurt. They need one big, powerful shot. Here's your fuse to shoot. Go back to the upper deck. 
I've done this a couple times. That's the only reason I'm being this fluid about it. So again, don't go in there. We need to go down here. So we got to go get our little buff, which is all the way back here. All right. Grab the buff. Again, now you're going to fall down through. Not too bad. And again, nothing too urgent yet. Now I'm probably going to have to orientate myself in here. So I'm just going to clear a couple things out from here. Now here's the buff you're going to want. So just keep that in mind for point of reference. Now I'm going to run out and try and spawn some of the guys that spawn. I don't know if that's going to do it. Yep, that's a couple. There's more than one, I can promise you, though. Got that no-scope snipe. I guess I'll take it. Now, the only real direction you need to go once you've got both of those down is going to be to the left. So, you're going to go basically one big corridor up and then left one, and then we're gonna head right back down there. You don't have to go anywhere else. Now there may be collectibles later, but stick with me. Here's your point of reference. Big red room that you drop down from. Come in here with the yellow paint on the walls. Shoot this. And you're gonna head straight past the main room. Take your first left. Have to go left. Right, right, and pass through here. And that's a wall. Ta-da! Got a switch. Open your door. And moving on. This room look familiar yet? This is where we were before. This is creepy chieftain who's being worked on. Sorry, dude. Now, difference is, this door's open. So, same thing. You can grab your buff. And that's why there's a lot of exploration I did in this place. I have a feeling the master difficulty may have a different path. Right, we're through here. And now that door is open. Not much to explore, so we can keep going forward. Now in here, you're going to have some more Screeb. You're also going to have a couple Abominations, so make sure you get your rockets ready. Really love it if they would quit trying to ruin my flawless run. Here's the Abominations. Gotta love Cluster Bombs, I guess. That's going to do the kill for me. Uh, one of them is still alive. I don't think I saw enough damage. Just to be careful, I'm going to check this side. Maybe they both died. Alright, I'll take that. Alright, so come on up. And when you get to the end of this room, you can't go through here, so we're going to go ahead and hit this switch. Homicide kept notes on experiments as well. And then right in here. Scorn exposed to the anomaly all suffered contiguous neuron death. And then you gotta go back and find your buff. Their minds. All but one who spoke with many dead voices. This survivor would become the centerpiece of their studies. The lore in here is so crazy. If I figure it out later, maybe I'll explain it to you guys in a video. But for now, I'm gonna let people who pay more attention to that than I do. Take care of that. Pass on through. And you're through the gate. Now, in here, we've got a couple things to activate. Now, these are same thing. When you get close, they will activate. Same thing over here. Now, I would duck over here first. Because you've got an add up here. Same thing down below. And then one over there to your right-hand side when you get down here. Now, you want to hit this fuse. Come up here and hit this switch. And when you hit this switch, be careful. Now, it's not required to hit this switch, but I have a feeling, again, more investigative pieces or something like that will be there later. Just so you guys know how to open it. But it's not actually required for this normal difficulty. So what you're going to notice is that little fuse we did opened to this. Now... There's one of those little buff things back there, and what you're going to do is basically refresh your buff as we come back through. So here's platform one. Skip this one. So 
we got to take the buff all the way to the other side, and then you have your fix in between. So bring it with you. You can basically skip this first jump, land flat on this one, jump up, get your refresh right here. They so got another 15 seconds. Hop down here. Come up. And now we're going to go to the left around this corner, and we are through. Alright, so we are at the boss fight now. I will explain this as we go. First thing you're going to want to do is just put enough damage into the boss to get him out of the room. And then it's a patience fight after that. Save your super. If you don't have your super, obviously we got a rally flag, so we can go ahead and charge up with that. You're just going to need this to pass through. And then once you drop down, the boss fight will commence. The boss will spawn down there. As I said, big damage first, but not your super. So chunk a rocket, chuck some heavy into him, just to try and get him out of the room. He will spawn across the way. Again, big damage is going to speed him out of this room. Now, you do not want him to spat, smash the ground near you. He will straight up kill you. So, okay, if you see that, he's moving out of there. Now you've just got to deal with the adds. Just a patience game. So, solar up top. Never quite enough damage. So, he's by himself. You're going to have two sides of adds that look about like this. Ow. Again, as I said, patience. Nothing is going to force you to go fast here. Same thing across the way. You're going to have a similar looking group of ads. A couple low level guys, another chieftain over there doing his thing. As I said, this is why you want the solar. And also reloads. Now, once you kill the first set, you're going to have about six more basic base level guys that spawn. They're basically like ammo ads. They're easy, but they're to help you get some ammo if you run out. Now, there's one more ad, but you need to hit both of these activation points, and then we're going to get the third one. You want to do these two first, because if you don't, the third one has a higher chance to kill you. Not saying it will. I squeaked it out once, but I wouldn't risk it, especially if you've got a good run going. All right, so once you come inside, peek this corner, figure out where your ad's at. When you cross this threshold, you will start burning, so you got to be fast. Run, activate. You will take burn damage, but you can turn it off fast enough. And that is why you want this to be the last one, because if you didn't, you'd have to run back out and not die, and that's where it's painful. Alright, so now the boss is going to be down below. You have three different ways to get here. Here, opposite side, in the front of the room. Typically all I do, hence why tracking rockets are very beneficial, fall, find him, he'll be sitting somewhere, front or back. He is down here somewhere, there he is. And again, if you just want to do that for damage, The big thing you want to do is make sure you do not let him hit you, because if he smashes you into a wall, you are going to die. Now, on the first phase of chunk of his health, he won't actually come, like, spawn more adds. Second, you'll see a few more adds. Third one, almost every time you damage him and jump back up, you'll see more adds. And again, this is why... Those jumps are a little treacherous, I will be honest. I have almost missed many times. So watch how much you move back and forth because those pipes will kind of mess with you. Um, watch where you're jumping. Like, these pipes will kind of screw with you and the angle of the wall will keep you from what you're trying to do. So there's the big guy. Same thing, jump on up. So as soon as you get him down to a third health, he's going to set the uh, burners on. So where it's blue, it's going to go red again. So you'll want to be up quick. I might get one more shot after this one on him. Yep, see, he's barely got enough health. One more, and then he's going to be back. I've got my super up to clear the room. I've also got my grenade up if I need it. He does not come back up, the boss. But you will be facing lots of ads, so be ready. 
soon as you hit him with enough damage, obviously you see it goes red. You do not want to be in there. I would take one of these corners and just hide. And be ready for your ads. So again, right here's a nice thing. Just sit here and let the damage work. Again, if you get in a pinch, throw a super. It is totally worth it, I promise. Also why a solar super is pretty good. For one, it's roaming, and two, it's a good way to clear ads. Because they're solar shields. Now down below, there's arc shields. That's why I said you don't need arc for much, but there are a couple arc shields down there. And the arc chieftains down below are what have honestly ruined my runs. Because they will do their little arc, like, gravity well thing, and you can't get a full jump off, and it's a problem. So again, same principle. Hit your activation. We've got the first two, so now we can open this room up again, clear your ad. Hit your... Hit this, hopefully you don't die. And, of course, it's just enough damage to freak you out every time. Now, I've got a good amount of sniper ammo up here, but there's also what sounds like chaos down below. So I'm gonna hit him and basically just run. Kinda wanna pull guys to one side or the other. Now, you can drop down up here, but it seems riskier because if you run them back and forth, you're going to have more space between the two sides of the room. Same idea. Get a few shots in, jump up. But now you'll notice I have ads up here. And these are pretty easy, and that was actually the... Um, if you're wondering what happened right there, that was my charge with the light. Actually, a uh, protective little pulse thing that happens. And you'll notice these guys up here tend to be somewhat generous with the ammo. That's literally why they spawn their ammo ads, if you've ever, you know what I'm talking about. Now I can go for a second shot here, which I'm going to try and do. So make sure you do not have, make sure you have enough room to get up. Now, did enough damage, I got more ads. There's the handle. That's why Scavenger... That's why reserves, that's why just having ways to get your heavy ammo is a good, good thing. If you don't have heavy ammo, drop down with the sniper rifle, whatever you can, just patience is the biggest key. Drop it down, same principle. I'm gonna jump back up. Now, he's getting somewhat low on the health. So I can probably start saving a couple of my rockets, work some snipe shots if I got him to the other side. Don't get greedy. The biggest thing I can tell you after playing any Dark Souls game, don't get greedy. Not worth it. Same thing, he's gonna be on the opposite side of the room now. So one decent snipe will stagger him. Now I'm gonna have to be a little more cautious. All right, so I got this side of the room pretty cleared. So again, if you feel like you're in kind of a bad spot, remember you don't need to open that door. You can kill the dude in here, but he won't even be spawned yet. So now you can take your time, find the dude up top. Got my little well for charge with light. Oh, I don't think I picked it up fast enough. Oh, I might have. Now you're gonna see more ads now, as you've noticed. More of these little blazer guys, make sure and hit their lanterns before they get close. Why it's good to make sure you've got your super when these sets of ads spawn because you want to make sure you can clear them out with decent ease. Gonna go around his little fire spewer. Same thing, I've got a decent amount out. So here's your two little side side guard ads. You just thinks. Almost done, by the way. We are almost done. You're basically at the end at this point. Just be safe and patient when it comes to the boss. Now, the big thing to remember, 
if you've used your super here, when you come back up, you're gonna start seeing more ads. So if you don't have anything like a submachine gun or something that clears ads quickly, or you would rather be safe, you could sit here and wait, get your super back, and then every time you come up with damage, just be ready. Again, why the big burst in damage is gonna be beneficial. Activate your two sides. Don't just have a rocket out randomly. It's a good way to blow yourself up. This guy should have spawned in here. Shut this down for the final time. Every time, just freaking me out. Now, you never quite know which side he's gonna be on, but if you try to remember where you were, maybe he'll be on the other side. There we go. Now, as I said, you got more ads coming. Again, be patient up here. Use your cover where you've got it. Nothing is forced here. Just keep that in mind. The boss is on a different level. But same principle will apply. He's going to come at you. Now, this is the times where you got to decide how much damage you want to put in. Can I go for two shots? Watch where you fall. Try and watch the pipes because those will mess you up too. Now, he's close to this side. And I got some ads that actually spawned down below, none up top this time. And just be ready, hence why saving my super is one of those things that I probably do too often, but it's not a bad thing here. Now, every so often he's gonna teleport like that. That's again why the little pop in, pop out tracking rocket, not a bad thing, because he probably would have killed me there. Kinda cheap, but he would have. Now, this will probably spawn some ads up here. Yep, sure did. Okay, got some lantern guys. See if you got anything else spawned up here, just to be safe. Reload that rocket. This is where if you had Ambitious Assassin, you'd be doing pretty good. All right, so he is really close to dead, but I've got ads up. Come on. There we go. I literally probably need to hit him with like two more rockets. Got some screams up here, so be careful. Go. Check your ads. Be careful. You don't need random surprises. They are trying to do that to you. Hence the horror movie. I think we're safe. I'm gonna go for the kill. And I got him. Now you're gonna have a couple stragglers. And you are done. So head back up to the top. And now you get to pick up your gun. You can do this once when you finish the mission and then one more per character per week it seems. I've seen it and others like it. In place of each world the darkness stole. At the edge of our heliopods. Let shoot the floor the out below you. To commune with the darkness. Now this is just a trippy room. I'll let you guys explore it. But it's kind of awesome. So you'll see a bunch of doors. And this is the really sad thing is the lore about this guardian right here. You should go read it. I can't explain it all right now. But you definitely need to read the lore about that that guy right there. Faint traces of light. That thing was a guardian. We're too late. Far too late. Take the rifle. It was offered, was it not? Better in your hands than left for another. I'll speak to Savala about authorizing exploratory outings. If we can recover our lost friend's ghost, we may learn more of how he died. Return to the city. We must assess our findings. 
So this is where you pick up the weapon, head back to Zavala. He's going to basically give the weapon to you officially after you pick it up the end of, at the end of the quest. I've already done that. So that is it. Weapon will leave and you are done. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to explore. Oh, see, I got that. There you go. Solo without dying. It is done. So that is the presage or presage mission. Hopefully this one helps you guys out. This is the solo patience guide, as you guys can tell. But this will help you get through it. And um, outside of a tracking rocket, you can probably do this with just about anything you're comfortable with. Tracking rocket just helps, as you can tell, in the end. Just kind of pop down, shoot one, pop up. Safe way to put in damage. Other than that, if you guys are new to the channel, please drop a like below. Leave a comment if you have thoughts, builds, or otherwise. There's going to be collectibles, master difficulty. Those videos will come later. So if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the alert bell so you guys don't miss out on those video guides. And then, of course, if you are new to me, uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash streaming there, sometimes streaming right here on YouTube and on Twitter as well. Thank you all very much. Have an awesome one, and I will see you all soon. Stay warm, stay safe, and catch you in the next one.